Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the end of our fall season of 2020. And thank you for listening to our Musically Speaking. I have to tell you how much I enjoy being with you for the pre-concert talks. And I'm so glad that you're listening uh, before the concerts now. And I want to say a special thank you to my artist colleague for all of his artistry and beautiful images. And that is Carrie Trout, our, our BPO artist, who puts together the visual component of these um, little talks that we have uh, so beautifully. I always tell Carrie that no matter how much I love the music, when I see his images, I am even more excited about uh, performing those pieces. So thank you, Carrie, for, for your beautiful contributions to our little lectures. Um, so we're coming to a concert tonight that is really our favorite of the year, and that is Classical Christmas. There's so much beautiful music written about this time of the year, the holidays, and it means a great deal to us. We're going to start with one that I know that everyone knows. We know it as What Child Is This? But it started life long before that, uh, in 1580, when it was actually written by King Henry VIII as a love song to his future queen, Anne Boleyn. It was then, of course, called Green Sleeves. And it wasn't until centuries afterwards that new lyrics were attached, lyrics by William Dix, that were about the Christmas season. That was 1865. And it has been so beloved ever since. It's not surprising that Vaughan Williams would choose this beautiful melody that he knew very well, everyone in England knew it very well, to set it in this really lovely scoring for orchestra. Fantasia on Green Sleeves. Arcangelo Corelli, one of the greatest Italian composers, uh, and his greatest accomplishment were a set of 12 concertos that he wrote, his Opus 6, in the late 17th century. And we're going to play the most beloved of those, his Christmas concerto. Now his concertos were concertos in the Baroque sense of the word, meaning that they had a, con a small group of soloists, in this case it's Nicky, Antoine, and Roman, surrounded by a much larger string orchestra and they played back and forth. The level of skill that Corelli uses in this magnificent piece is extraordinary. It's really miraculous writing. And it was written to be played in Rome on Christmas Eve at midnight mass. And there hovers over this music this kind of feeling of profound spirituality, mystery, and joy. And the most special movement is the last. Now, normally in this kind of piece, the last movement would be a, a fast and joyful uh, ending, but Corelli instead decides to paint a beautiful spiritual picture of the shepherds seeing the star and following it to the stable at Bethlehem. So this pastoral, as he calls it, is filled with the music of the shepherds, their melodies, the songs they would sing to calm their sheep, as they come to see the miraculous child in the manger. It is an absolutely glorious piece and with the most miraculous ending. We hope you enjoy the Christmas concerto. We've talked before about the Italian composer Ottorino Respighi, about how much he loved his country, how much he wanted to give his fellow Italians hope and pride uh, during a very difficult time in Italy, his tremendous reverence for history and for the accomplishments of the Italians of the past. In his piece, Botticelli Triptych, he's paying a glowing tribute to the works of the Italian Renaissance painter, Sandro Botticelli. Uh, the three movements in that piece are musical depictions of Botticelli's spring, his birth of Venus and his adoration of the Magi, all luminous and remarkable paintings. Tonight we're playing one of those movements. We're playing the adoration of the Magi, uh, which is actually a portrait in music of that painting. Translucent harmonies, gorgeous melodies, 
very polished and beautiful sensuous landscape, Respighi actually transports us to the stable in Bethlehem at the moment that the three kings, the Magi, are coming to meet the Christ child. So there's a sense of joy, of serenity uh, about this whole piece. And we can almost feel the, the angel's uh, wings moving in, as they hover over the stable. Respighi borrows two very beloved Italian Christmas songs. One is, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And the second is, Tu scendi dalle stelle, You Come Down from the Stars. It is a beautiful addition to our Christmas concert. Now, Antonio Vivaldi, probably the most beloved Italian composer of the Baroque period. Uh, at this concert, we're presenting his virtuoso concerto for four violins, featuring Nikki, Amy, Antoine, and Clement. And as many of you remember, Antonio Vivaldi was a priest in addition to being a virtuoso violinist and a great composer. And he was the director of an orphanage for girls, L'Hospitale de la Pietà, right on the Grand Canal, uh, and still there to this day. Now, this orphanage for girls was not only for girls who had lost their parents, but also for, for young girls whose parents couldn't afford to keep them and had to give them away, or whose children who were born out of wedlock, or who were born with birth defects or handicapped, uh, and their parents didn't want them. But Vivaldi welcomed them all to the orphanage and taught them music and uh, uh, their orchestra actually became extremely popular throughout Europe. Last week, someone asked me an interesting question. What happened to these young girls when they were adults, when they were old enough to have their own lives? Well, they did lots of different things. Many of them went into religious life as nuns. Uh, some stayed and worked at La Pietà for the rest of their lives. Many, though, became prized music teachers to the aristocracy because of the training they had received by Antonio Vivaldi. Many also married, um, again, often into noble families because as members of the orchestra, they were considered stars. And some even became conductors. And I wanted to read you this little comment by a, a man from France who had traveled all the way to Venice to see and hear the orchestra and was very taken by it. Uh, Charles de Brosse, he said, it was so charming to see a young and pretty nun in her white robe with a bouquet of pomegranate flowers over her ear, leading the orchestra and beating time with all the grace and precision imaginable. I had to smile when I read that because I realized that the, the female conductors at La Pietà were actually the very first women conductors in history. We are very excited that we have an amazing star as our guest, Kyle Van Schoonhoven. Kyle is from Blackport and he's a graduate of Fredonia School of Music and he's one of the greatest tenors of his time. Kyle actually, a couple of years ago, won the grand finals of the Metropolitan Opera Auditions and he sung in opera productions all over the country. One of one of our greatest artistic highlights of our Buffalo Philharmonic season was his electrifying performance as Don Jose in the Opera Carmen. We're honored that he is back with us to delight you in two Christmas classics. He'll be singing Handel's Every Valley Shall Be Exalted from the Messiah and O Holy Night. Another special part of our classical Christmas is one of our own Buffalo Philharmonic stars, Sal Andalina. Sal plays clarinet, bass clarinet, sax, and he's also one of the very few Buffalo natives that are a member of our orchestra. I asked Sal if he would make arrangements, especially for this concert for you, of two holiday favorites. The Christmas song, sung by Bing Crosby in Holiday Inn, and a very appropriate classic for our own current times. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. That song was written during World War II, and it was especially loved 
by those people who were not able to be together on Christmas because of the war, could only be together in their dreams. Many of us can't be with our families, but we are always with them in our hearts. I want to thank you, Sal, for arranging this as we look forward to a new year where we all can be together again. Finally, we end our concert with a greeting from our musicians to you. We wish you Merry Christmas. And since we are performing this on the eve of Beethoven's 250th birthday, we've chosen a version written in the style of Ludwig van Beethoven. The musicians and I want to send you our heartfelt wishes for a happy holiday, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, uh, Happy New Year. We're so grateful that you are spending part of your holiday with us. We hope that the new year will hold good health and joy for all of you. With love from all of us.